This video is about a non-working 1977 IBM Selectric 2 typewriter. I'm filming this video with a different camera than I usually am because my usual camcorder broke on me a couple days ago. As you can see, the LCD screen uh, is worn out and flickers on and off, so it's not really usable anymore as a camera, but as it is 8 years old, it might be time for a replacement anyways. Anyway, turning back to the typewriter, it's in um, very beautiful blue. It's in good condition, there's no significant paint chipping or damage or scratches. These machines were very well built. Um, the mechanism is mostly mechanical, there's an electric motor in the back that assists um, the mechanism and an electric plug connection and that's the only electric component on this machine. Otherwise it's fully mechanical. This machine is operated by a golf ball mechanism which is in here. Maybe you can see it or I can take it out. This is the famous IBM golf ball. And the way this works is it rotates and makes an impression on the page. Um, it is a quite a famous invention. It was one of the very first successful typewriters without the type slot mechanism. Um, during, this, uh, during the 1970s they also had those Smith Corona electric 120s, 250s, those particular models that still had the slingshot arm hammer system that typed the old fashioned way. And then this was introduced, I believe it was in the late 60s when the number one Selectric came on the market. Of course IBM had already produced the uh, first IBM Selectric typewriter, but again that was an electronically assisted mechanical typewriter with the old fashioned type bar system installed. I picked this machine up for free um, and because back in the 70s these machines were um, lubricated with grease after 40 years the grease has gunked up the entire mechanism. On this side there is a gear or a spool that assists the main drive belt for the pulley which pulls the um, golf ball mechanism along along with the cartridges and the correction tape. Here you have the inner works. This is your um, ribbon cartridge with carbon ribbon. Your these orange spools are correction tape. This is your golf ball typing element, and then of course you know margin sets, plats, and everything like that. And this system, which is in this case the carriage that moves instead of the plat in itself, um, it's assisted by a main drive belt, which is located over here. And the drive belt is guided through a pulley that's located on the outside of the main frame. And it is adjustable, it has springs that will allow the tension to um, fluctuate. And because it's partially made of plastic, the plastic has deteriorated over the years and it's broken off. So using this machine wouldn't be wise because if those cords come off and get tangled up, the machine will be useless and it already has some problems because of that because the backspace doesn't work it cannot get enough tension fluctuation in order for it to uh, pull the carriage over one space and um, the enter key also works intermittently because of that now another problem this machine has is the gears that are located over here which assist the spacing have worn out so what they do is they have two little hooks and they hang on to a leg, they get, in, uh, get locked into a gear which will then um, get locked onto the spinning shaft that runs through this machine and which is assisted by the electric motor in the back. Because those pins are worn out they won't get a grip on the gear and it will just rattle and make that spinning noise and they won't get a good grip so it will work but eventually the mechanism will just fail on it because if those don't get replaced and they wear out even more what will happen is they don't get a grip and these, uh, the space bar and the keys won't get that electrical assistance that they need in order for the carriage to function. For those that are interested, this machine was bought uh, by the Nanaimo Business Machines Company, which is still in business, but of course, it being 2016, no longer specializes in typewriters. The machine otherwise is in very good shape. I haven't cleaned it. I first wanted to check if it worked. I didn't actually expect it to work at all. These things. You know, they're very good machines, but they have a reputation for the problems such as the one this one has. Regardless, there are no significant paint chips. This is all metal, for those that have never seen one before. And on the back, not a mark 
just the IBM logo. Anyways, despite the problems, I will do a brief typing sample to show you that it does somewhat work. Um, I, the machine came with a few accessories, such as two packets of ribbon. So these are two new cartridges. It also had additional typing elements. So here we have, I think this is cursive. This is Elite font in the box and a few additional, here's Gothic. And then it also came with a packet of correction tapes which were sold by brother but which work fine. And I also have the dust cover which is intact and in good condition. And it also has the IBM logo on there. There's my cup of tea. Which I will put aside. See that because of the broken pull, though, uh, because of the worn out gears, it already doesn't advance as it should. Like I said, I did some research, and to replace the pulley would cost about $15 in parts and then $30 approximately in shipping, which I find ridiculous. And then um, the worn out gears is about the same, but you know, it's uh, there are more plastic parts in this, they're just as old as the pulley, so it's likely that something else will go too and investing in this I think would be a bottomless pit. Nonetheless these are very good typewriters and surprisingly they are still uh, for example at use at my university um, so they do prove their reliability and there are people that specialize in their maintenance and their repair uh, but personally it's not for me so anyway this is my knowledge on the IBM Selectric 2 my thoughts and I hope you enjoyed this video thank you